start. <gasps> Welcome everyone to Crap Chocolate TV. I'm Dylan. No, wait a minute. Hold on. And I'm Greg D. <laughs> so happy to have you joining us. You gotta be louder. <laughs> so happy to have you joining us. Right. So today we are going to talk about a very exciting episode of tempering. And tempering is something that is our nightmare. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's probably the hardest part about chocolate making. As, as craft chocolate, yeah. it is the most difficult step in a lot of ways because we don't add lecithin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dylan, what is lecithin? <laughs> <laughs> Um, lecithin is a surfactant and an emulsifier. And so it basically does two things. It makes the chocolate, I mean, the easiest thing to say is it makes the chocolate runnier. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's um, exactly what it does. It, it, it makes it easier to work with. It makes it easier to work with. My understanding is it also sort of um, makes it so that chocolate will stay in temper longer. Like it, it like, mm. it, I, again, like I don't know this for certain, but this is, what, people what you've read me. about? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I I actually used lecithin when I first began learning about chocolate mm. with Dan O'Darty. Yeah, yeah. In the lab at UH in 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. mainly. And I didn't know enough to pay attention to how it affected the chocolate at that time because yeah. I was so new to the whole thing. It was like a recipe. You were just like... It was like, a recipe this that we followed. It's like at 0.02% yeah, yeah. or whatever yeah, exactly. percentage it might have been. It's, yeah. it's very minuscule. Yeah. And uh, that is how we made chocolate because right. that's what the book said. That's what yeah. the industry did. And then... Now there's a better book. <laughs> there, there is. There's like... What, what is the book called? Making Chocolate. The Book of Making Chocolate. From Bean to S'more. Sabina Bar some more, and there's a few others. Yeah. And in fact, your guys' book, I, I we're gonna give it another shout out, is truly amazing when it comes to making chocolate. And I remember when you first told me about making this book, and I thought you were insane I mean, because we there's were. so many other things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It and you guys decided to create this phenomenal book. I I love that you say this as a person who's done 65 episodes of Craft Talk <laughs> TV. Like, don't you have better things to do with your time? Well, thank you for your help. But I mean, like, we are just drinking wine and talking okay, about it's chocolate. Enough, it's enough. a little Which different. Which we would have done anyway. We, even we if... do it anyway yeah, 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 almost yeah. every day yeah. if we're together. So, um, tempering. tempering. We currently use... Well, should we describe what tempering is? Go for it. No, no, you, please. Well, tempering is structuring cocoa butter crystals into a grid, right? So you get six cocoa butter crystals, and we are trying to align them into a formation that gives it structure. This is so much like tempering glass and tempering steel. Mm -hmm. You want your chocolate bar to have a snap, and oftentimes people think that chocolate is not good and it's chalky, only because it's gone through a temperature fluctuation where it causes it to separate. And you've got the, the fats and the solids that have now been separated yeah. to the point where it doesn't taste good on your palate. Right. Now, when we temper chocolate, it lines that up into a grid and it melts evenly and it tastes better just because of texture. It doesn't mean it's good or bad. Right. It just means that it is in alignment. And it's one of the things that makes cocoa totally interesting and unique is that one of the crystal structures yep. in cocoa melts at the temperature inside your mouth. Like, yep. there's plenty of other fats out there that can number go... Number five. Into, yeah, number five, right? Beta crystal number five. Bring it there's on. A, there's a bunch of other fats out there that can have different crystal structures. They don't melt at the temperature inside your mouth. So part of the thing about chocolate for people is that, that it's just... It, like, one of those crystal structures melts at the right temperature. Yeah, it behaves perfectly. And so the, this is a bit of a tangent in the way that we're making spread. So behind us, we do a chocolate oh. macadamia nut spread in this grinder. And we are constantly trying to figure out the recipe of using nibs. And it's constantly backfiring yeah. because the fat doesn't want to cooperate. Right. And cocoa butter is just one of these things that is almost impossible to create a stable recipe because of temperature. Mm -hmm. And so what we might get perfect for Hawaii is not going to be perfect for San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. And then what we could get for San Francisco wouldn't work here. Interesting. Yes, yeah. it's a bit of a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at finally scrapping cocoa butter altogether uh -huh. and going with just cocoa powder because we need a shelf stable product hmm. that people look at and don't say, what the heck is yeah. wrong with this? Why, this Why did it turn into a thousand little balls? Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like, um, 
I, I like it's it's the boon and the bane of our existence, right? Cocoa butter. Um, and when we say cocoa butter, yes, people refer to cocoa butter as if it's a single thing. But the reality is, like every bean has different fats in it. Like it's all called cocoa butter, but like all the the fat in each bean just works differently. Some are softer, some are harder, and like and so if you're if you're using the fat from the bean, which most craft chocolate, I guess all craft chocolate makers do, right? You know, so like. Um, the way some industrial chocolate is made is you get most of the fat, out, much of the fat out. You're left with powder, which is just sort of the residue from the bean. Once you remove the fat, or again, remove most of the fat, um, you're left with a powder. You're probably left with maybe twelve percent of the yeah, fat. Yeah. You just can't so, get yeah, out. Exactly. Um, uh, and then you can add whatever fat you want, and you can also add a consistent fat to make sure you can work with it consistently. Because we're using beans, every bean has a different fat. So you have to kind of like tweak your process for everything. Yeah. So for example, a lot of say um, uh, Camino Verde. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's the fat content in Camino Verde? Uh, so it varies depending on the. Well, that's the other thing. Is it also fifty? If less, maybe yeah. forty-eight, yeah, forty-nine. Yeah, yeah. If I remember correctly, we 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 did when we like when we tested it was like in the in the forty-eight percent range. Bolivia, um, sixty-two. What? That's a lot. Hawaii, fifty-eight. Well, those are those are big numbers. Those are big numbers. Big differences in yeah, the yeah. amount of fat content in a single seed, huh. and that's not talking about the three types of acids of yeah, fat yeah, that make up that yeah. same bean yeah. that'll vary every single uh, location. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and so and so it's kind of like in working with this fat, you are trying to get this, you know, form five, the the form that melts inside your mouth. Um, one of the the differences between the six different crystal structures is they each melt at different temperatures, right? And so that's why form five is kind of they have different qualities as well, but they all do melt. Okay, at different so temperatures. I, I know that you at Dandelion don't work. Oh, there's a child out there. Um, I know that it's you not guys <laughs> not mine either. <laughs> I know there's that you guys don't work with cocoa butter. Well, we don't and work with added cocoa butter. Added cocoa butter. We do. Mm -hmm. um, you probably haven't seen too many examples of cocoa butter separating if you just leave it there. We've seen the different acids separate. Interesting. If you just leave it there. Yeah, because we, we don't have like vats of cocoa butter. Right. It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, hmm. and so one of the things that I've been thinking of is to let the cocoa butter separate to the point where you can add certain types of cocoa butter to the spread where it'll maybe cooperate better. Interesting. So Interesting. it's just a creative solution yeah. to try and still use cocoa butter. I mean, I, I understand like compound chocolate that's made with other fats out that aren't cocoa butter. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, there's people out there. Yeah, there, there's people out there. This is, that's really weird because it's super late. <laughs> oh, it is. That's true. Yeah. Um, Everyone go home. Go. <laughs> stop working. Um, so, uh, what is there? cocoa butter, it's got different fats. Um, well, let, let's actually jump into tempering machines. Okay, great. So what do you guys use at Dandelion Chocolate? So, um, so we use different things in different facilities. Um, actually we use three different things in three different facilities. So, um, in our Valencia Street facility, actually we're using a Gammy. Um, so, so there, there's kind of different types of tempering machines. I guess one place Let me to back start. up. What feeds your automated molding line? Oh, um, there's a tempering. So we have an automated molding line from um, Technochalk, which you're about to get one too. Or In like it's... two days, yeah. it arrives to Hawaii. Um, very exciting. Very exciting. Um, they also build a tempering machine. It's a plate temperer. So we should probably talk about you the different... You bought the plate temperer. And it's great. Oh, you went legit. Okay. Well, made, made life good. We didn't make um, that step. Well... See how it goes. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, that's most of chocolate making is like, we did this. Um, you know, yeah. uh, but, but we should talk about the different types of temperature machines because there's like batch temperers, there's continuous temperers, there's like, right. And so, You're going to bring up some painful memories here. Oh, yeah. I batch know. tempering was painful for us. Yeah. We bought a Savage yep. holding tank that is a batch tempering machine. It does not work for craft chocolate. I, so I know that Ritual out of um, Utah used um and they might still use savage tempering machines for a while um uh we we like played around with one and yeah had a hard time using it as well no um way so so a batch just for everyone okay so tempering just to be clear tempering is um setting the right crystal structure in your chocolate yep Th this happens through 
heating the chocolate up, cooling it down to set the crystals, and then like reheating it so that you you keep it in a sort of stable form, melted but stable form with enough seed crystals in it, so that when you put it into a mold and cool it, those seed crystals become the nucleation site that create this crystalline structure in the chocolate. Yeah, I'm sure everyone understood that. Okay. So. <laughs> so because of this, there's kind of a couple different ways to go. So with a batch temper, what you're doing is you're trying to get, so when you say seed crystals, um, I think one of the ways to think about it is think about like, I'm trying to think of something else that does this, that has like nucleation sites. Um, what, oh, have you ever had those sugar candies where you like, um, where you make sugar candy by having like a, uh, um, a sugar solution that is, has like a lot of sugar in it and then you put a stick in it and then the sugar starts to like grow around or like no, or like seen. frost on a window where it's like as soon as there's like points of frost and then the frost sort of like right. spreads out from it those are nucleation sites right that's like in order for crystals to grow they they grow based on a, a pattern like they, they grow out of a pattern based on sort of a template from from like a, you know a one, single crystal. one initial site right um, and so and so this is when people talk about seed crystals this is what they mean is these crystals these form five crystals that are the like right which is structure. why you'll hear so commonly that you seed chocolate yeah exactly um, and in fact I guess we should talk about this um, because I know like in Brazil a lot of people do this um, there's um, there's something I'm totally blank on the name of it now but there's um, there's a device. So you basically put cocoa butter into it, and it creates a bunch of seed crystals Is in it that cocoa easy butter. Easy temper. Easy temper. Yeah. Yes, I've heard it's amazing. A, a lot of people swear by it. Yeah. Right. That what you do is you put yep. cocoa butter in it. It creates seed crystals in cocoa butter, and then you take the seeded cocoa butter, add it to your chocolate, add it to your like melted chocolate, and you just have to make sure there's you know you've melted enough so there's no other um, crystals in it, and then your chocolate's tempered. Yep. That's a wonderful thing, seen as how uh, it is our main nightmare. It, now, I, my understanding, the only people I know who do it don't necessarily do it at scale. It's like people who are sort yeah. of tempering small sets yeah, of sure. chocolate. What you guys did is jump up to a scaled version of tempering, yeah. whereas we're still in the middle. Yeah. We're still yeah. using a continuous tempering machine instead of right. a batch tempering machine. Right. So there's like crystal formations being broken and reset constantly in a loop. So, so this is what a c continuous tempering machine does, is or at least the theory behind it. I'm saying the theory behind it because like it doesn't. No one really. It doesn't has a work. Good explanation for it. Well, and it. it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work, right? Whereas you basically have, um, you have a bowl of melted chocolate. At and a certain and what I'm realizing is, a way to explain what's going on here is this is what makes your chocolate bar look. Pretty. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, that's good. good point. It's got like a nice shine to right. it. It looks nice. And, and it doesn't melt in your hand. It yep. melts in your mouth. Yep. Right? Like this is this is like this is tempered chocolate. That's why you temper chocolate. And so in craft chocolate, continuous tempering machines tend to be the only way that we can because they make, they make bars. small, relatively cheap ones. Yeah. Right? You can get one for five to Thirty thousand dollars, depending on the size. Yeah, that's a good right? range. Um, well, so what a continuous tempering machine does is it says, "Okay, there's going to be a bowl of chocolate. It's all heated up to a temperature, and then that chocolate is pulled through, you know, with an auger. Usually, I guess all of them have an auger. Yep. Oh, yeah, I guess all of them have an auger. So pulled through a channel where it's cooled down as it's flowing through this channel, and that creates these seed crystals." Now, the, the, the idea is supposed to be you can then, so as these crystals are created, you can deposit it into a mold. You have these seed crystals, but if the chocolate goes back into the bowl, the bowl is hot enough that those seed crystals will remelt, and then the bowl is seed free chocolate. Now, theoretically. The, theoretically. The reality is it doesn't work, um, yeah. or it doesn't work that way. Um, I'm not saying continuous time machines don't work, lots of people use them, they definitely work. But it, but like that theory, the reality is some seed crystals don't melt, and so then you create more seed crystals, and then eventually that bowl gets sort of over crystallized. And so one of yes, we've experienced that multiple times, all the time, right? For us, so one of the things we do is um, to, to ensure the continuous temperature machine works better is we're con we have another melted melting tank, and we're constantly adding new chocolate to the tank. Okay, so this is what we do as well. So we have a holding tank that feeds our tempering, our continuous yeah. tempering machine. Yeah. 
and by matching the temperatures up, we're able to continually temper for exactly. hours. Same, same for us. And so we can go tempering all so day. So let, let's jump into actual equipment and brands. Mm-hmm. What do you guys generally use if it's not your um, automated molding line yeah. techno chop? So, um, so we use gammies, um, and we were using FBMs, but I don't what size? The gammy? Yeah. Uh, I think when it's a twenty kilo. A twenty four. Oh, 24. Yeah, yeah, 24 kilo. That's what I, that's what we're using. And one of the reasons we decided on a gammy is um, craft Packet. chocolate. <laughs> well, yeah. Pa- I mean, you know, like Lorenzo from Packin doesn't steer us wrong. Um, but also, uh, craft chocolate is really thick. And so, the um, like, the first continuous temperature machine we used was a Selmy. And we had to, like, replace the motor because the motor wasn't strong enough to move our thick chocolate. So we had to do all this stuff ourselves to like get it to work for it. Then we moved on to an FBM. And you know, FBM said, oh, this is designed to be used Model with craft chocolate. Model is Unica. Unica. FBM said this is designed to be used with craft chocolate. Still had problems of like moving the chocolate and it's getting too thick. And right. then the auger stopping because like the chocolate's just too thick. Then we moved on to the gammy. And so far, and again, like, I, I'm not using the Gammy every day. Other chocolate makers um, at Dan Line are. But what when I've asked them, in general, the consensus is the Gammy tends to work better than the FBM. And this is the 24 kilo model. Yeah. So that's what we found as well. The 24 kilo model is the easiest for Manoa chocolate to temper our chocolate. Right. Um, we tried the 50 kilo model, mm-hmm. and it hasn't worked as well because the mass in the bowl doesn't crystallize properly yeah and so we're trying to figure out how to get it to mix better Mm -hmm. as it's dispensed so that we can actually have the proper uh temper right when we cool it off so so we did figure out what the problem was and it was a mixing problem and so this is all so new it's hard to blame any any particular company oh, on why our types no of chocolate. Like everyone's trying to make something work, right? Right. Well, I mean, like you can be frustrated after you spend 20 or 30,000 euros on a machine and oh, it yeah. didn't people, work. People definitely have that frustration. You've got the right look on your yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we, we just have to realize that we're in a relatively new type of industry so that the fact that we don't add lecithin, which we right. talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, there's just no history behind it. So we, we have to kind of take it with a grain of salt as we're trying to temper and create chocolate with less fat. Um, but one of the things we and should say is these like these continuous tempers. They're, they, this continuous temper is with this sort of notion that... Bubbles. Yeah. Um, uh, the notion that you, you should be able to temper the chocolate. It goes back into the bowl. The crystals are broken. Cycle ad nauseum. Um, that's one method, um, but um, Solik is another company that makes tempering machines. Large scale. And, um, well, larger scale, but not necessarily that much more expensive. Um, and, and the theory behind those machines is the chocolate doesn't go back into the tank. It extracts chocolate from the tank. Plates. Um, I, I have to be honest. I don't actually know if Solik's are plates. Okay, I don't but, know either, but I think they work where there's just plates, just like your... Yeah, I, the one we have is, and I mean, like, so right now, right now, um, uh, Adam and Dustin from Dick Taylor are watching this and just shaking their heads like this. They're just going like this. They're like, Greg. <laughs> well, um, yeah. they can come on the show themselves and they can talk <laughs> well, about no, it. Well, no, but they, they, they use a Solic, right? Um, uh, in fact, they use a Solic that we bought from, uh, from Taza and then resold to them. And um, Adam, I believe, said he's going to be buried with it because he loves it so much. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Like, well, but but it's a different methodology, right? Instead of having chocolate doing this sort of circulation, you're like, extract chocolate, get crystals in it, put it into a mold. Only create the crystals in the chocolate that you want. So you don't have this, you don't have this uh, uncertainty of, like, what's the crystallization in the continuous tank, right? Because you, you have a tank of... Like and this, is, that. and this is how our plate temper works, right? Yeah. You extract chocolate out of the, the big melting tank, you add the crystals to it, you put it into the mold, doesn't go back in the tank. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, that's why you guys are getting a good temper with no fat, no fat added. Yep. Um, okay, so just to go over a few of the machines, 
one of the first continuous tempering machines that we purchased was called an Aura. And yeah, it from is, FBM. It's an FBM. We still use it to this day. Mm-hmm. It's the smallest continuous temperer on the market. I don't even know if they still make it. Yeah, I don't actually know but either. It's a four kilogram machine. We, yes, that's right. But we still use it today. And continuous tempering just works for craft chocolate. Yep, yep. We then scaled up to a 25... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore the fact that we had a 200 kilo savage oh. continuous and temperature it just didn't machine work, because huh? we we must have remelted 50,000 bars oh. in a pretty quick amount of time huh. years and years yeah, ago yeah, yeah. when 50,000 bars was a oh, lot yeah. 50,000 bars, bars was like a lot of back then bars. it was like yeah. half of what we would make yeah, in a totally. year so now we use uh the 25 kilo diva yeah. gammy yeah. and we have very few problems yeah yeah we can tweak it to the point where even with our humidity levels we still get a decent temper almost right. every day. Yeah. And I don't know how different Selmy or FBM might be. We don't have as much experience with them. But those are kind of the main brands that yeah. Kraft Chocolate would use. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. But yeah, I think those are the main brands. I mean, I think one of the... And this is... like I say this with all equipment. The reality is like the equipment is just equipment. And, and a lot of it comes down to like, what are you putting into it? How are you using it? Like, how do you like using it? Who's going to support you on the other end? Who's going to support you? And so, and so, like, I I think none of the equipment just works out of the box perfectly. That's, there's, actually, that's not true. The packet winnower works out of the box perfectly. That's great. Because we should have one showing up in two weeks. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to hear that. You're going to love it. Best news of the day. It really (laughs) just, like, it just works. Um, But for the most part, especially for the more complex machines, like the tempering machines, you got to figure out how it works for you and then you got to kind of get used to it. Um, And so I I think like, you know, we used FBM, we used the Selmy for years, we used FBM for years and then we, now we're using Gammy's. Um, And I wouldn't say that like Gammy's perfect and FBM's terrible or anything. It's just kind of like what you end up sort of what ends up working for you. Um, And because we're doing two ingredients, 70% chocolate, that's a very specific need we have. Yeah, you're in the most you know? difficult tempering category of all. Yeah, 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 totally. I guess 65% to ingredient chocolate might be worse, but I that would be try it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's part of the reason we do 70% chocolate. It's because 70% yeah. is this like balance where like you can still temper it. There's it's not, just enough fat that there's remains. There's just enough fat. Yeah. And depending on the bean, some beans, there's too little fat you know uh-huh, like Camino right. Verde that's why we we use an enormous amount of Camino Verde it's what we use in our hot chocolates and all these kinds of things this is Camino Verde from um, Ecuador from Ecuador uh, um, Vicente Norero is the is the um, is the person who produces it um, uh, it's we've been using it for years Vicente is amazing love working with him we get it through Meridian Cacao um, it's great it doesn't have a lot of fat. And so, like, we love it for a lot of purposes. It's the most cocoa-tasting chocolate I've ever tasted. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. If, I mean, you, if you like the flavor of chocolate, cocoa... Uh, not cocoa, Camilo. <laughs> <laughs> Vicente um, stuff. Yeah. Co- uh, Camino, Camino Verde. Verde. Camino Verde is the, like, premiere of and, chocolate And that's flavor. why all of our hot chocolate, and we make an enormous amount of hot chocolate, is all made with Camino Verde. We still don't do a 70% bar with Camino Verde because it won't you can't move. temper it. You can't temper it. You can't get it to move through the machine. Can you get it to ball mill? Uh, yeah. So we, we, we do. Do you know what's funny? So we, we, um, we make all of our Camino Verde in a ball mill and conch now. Um, and it is thick, but the, but the packet ball mill and conch will work. It won't run through the techno chalk. We have tried to, we have tried to deposit it as like chips in the techno chalk and it's just like literally like you open the valve and nothing awesome. moves and you're just like this is really bad yeah. um, nice idea yeah and so and so so all of the Camino Verde we make we make as ground chocolate rather than as chips okay well Dylan thank you so much for having me on Craft <laughs> Greg, Chocolate TV Greg you're very insightful Greg this has been a wonderful <laughs> episode very insightful and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time thank you so much cheers aloha cheers.